hier, dan beteken het, jy krijg baie producte. So with ionizers, of the size is completely, it means you get a lot of products. For an acid, it will be KA, for a base, it will be KB. Ga A en ga B. Dan, as het een hoë KA waarde het, KA waarde het, so high means anything bigger than one, enig is groter as een is hoog, dan beteken het, hy het volledig geioniseer of dissocieer, en dis is het een sterk seer of basis. If it has a low KA value, then it ionizes or dissociates incompletely, so it means it's a weak acid or a base. Oh, shame. All right. Okay. So, um, right. Jylle hoef jy nou daar oop te maakie, but in your exam book, booklet on page 52, op bladse 52, at question 9, by vraag 9, Gee hulle vir jou die volgende. They give you the following. They say oxalic acid. Okay, we know now oxalic acid looks like that. It has a Ka value of 5.6 times 10 to the power minus 2. And they give you carbonic acid. Kind of cool, see? And they say that Ka value is 4.3 times 10 to the power minus 7. Okay, so hulle geef jou daarna. En dan vraag hulle vir jou, the first ask to find the term weak acid, en ons het nou net gesê, swak sier, ioniseer, onvolledig. Weak acid ionizes incompletely to give a low concentration of hydronium ions, om een laag concentratie van hydronium ion te geef. Dan vraag hulle vir jou by die volgende vraag, Wat er een is die sterker een van die twee? They're both weak, but which one of the two is the stronger one? And give a reason for your answer. So wat een van hier die twee is sterker, en hoekom is hy sterker? Kijk na die KA waardes. Die eerste een, hoekom is die eerste een sterker? Hoekom is oksal sier sterker? Want sy KA waarde is groter, it has a bigger KA value, so it means it ionizes more than the bottom one. Ok, goed, so kan jy sien hoe hulle dit kan vraag? So ons gaan sê, wat er een is sterker, which one is stronger? And our answer will be, Oxalic acid is stronger for one mark and the second mark, why is it stronger? The Ka value is bigger meaning it ionizes um, more or better or more completely. More completely, can you say that? More. But. Ok. Goed, dan het ons ook een ionisatie constante nog een kaal waarde, die kaal wie waarde, vir water. Ok, so jy het kaal A, B, C en W. Ok, now the ionization constant for water is very significant. Very helpful, and it is on your data sheet. Hy is op jou data sal, want hy is a constante. It is a constant. Ok, so ons gaan hier so lees, die unisatie constante van water. Die, dit sê so, the equilibrium constant, so by eeuwig, for the ionization of water, is the following. It's the ionic product of water. Ok, en dit is daar 1, 1 times 10 to the power of minus 14. 1 mal 10 to the macht, minus 
14. That is the ionization constant of water. The ionization constant of water. Okay, by obviously by 25 degrees Celsius, but we'll always take it at 25 degrees Celsius. Good, now how do by that 1 mal 10 to the minus 14 gekom? Here on the set. Water is, of cyber water, by order, is a weak electrolyte. Okay, how come it's a swak? Because water will not actually up it. It doesn't want to ionize, split up into two ions. Water is water. Cyber water will by mekaar blijven. So it ionizes only very slightly. Maar indien hy so opbreek, if it would have ionized, dan sy nou opgebreek het in die waterstof en die hydroxide oon. Okay. From there, as jy die constante moet gaan uitwerk, so jy daar gekry het. So you have to calculate the constant from that graph there. Ach, graph um, equation, dan so jy daar gekry het. Okay. But in here, in here, Kom, cyber vloeistoffe kom nie daarin. Pure liquids does not go in there. So, omdat water cyber is, because water is a pure liquid. Okay. The, con the, the concentration is 1. So, hy word helemaal uitgeloos, so ons kry net daar. We only get that. Ja. Yeah. Okay, so that is who swak water ionisier. Okay, so you can see how klein is daar die concentratie. Now, that 14 is nogal baie belangrijk, and you'll gaan op die volgende blad sien hoe kom hy belangrijk is. Blau. Okay, so, for cyber water, for pure water, omdat hy opbreek evenredig, because it splits up equally, the concentration of hydronium and the concentration of hydroxide will be the same. So, minus 7 plus minus 7 gives you minus 14. Dan as jy a sier oplossing het, if you have an acidic solution, then it means your acid concentration must be more than your base concentration. So, you can see your sier concentratie is groter as jou basis concentratie. So, your sier concentratie gaan groter wees as minus 7. If you have a basic solution, then your base concentration must be greater than your acid concentration. So you can see your basis is greater as your sier concentratie, and that is greater as multi Ja. Yeah. Ja, so we hier onder. Okay, gaan hy nou vir jou sin maak. If you look at this scale here, this is the pH scale that is linked with your H concentration, and your OH concentration. Now, I know you listen is very moeilijk or lelijk gedruk. So, just write for yourself here, this is the concentration of the hydrogen ion, and this is the concentration of the hydroxide ion. Here is your PH, here links, and here is your PH, a voorbeeld, an example. Okay, good, so there is clumps here in basis, and where they fit on the pH scale, here in the middle circle, there, so you see is cyber water, pure, pure water, the cyber water, see you, that the concentration of the acid, of the base, is equal to the concentration of the acid. This is how much cyber water drink is it yearlik, want you feel nie, it is seperig and glibberig in your mouth nie, and you feel nie, it is seer and nie lekker in your mouth nie. Okay, good. So cyber water, proe jy amper nie. Why? Because the base and the acid concentration are equal to one another. Jy vroeg, hoe kom sê mense dan jy? Ons gaan nou nie, ek ons het nie baie tijd nie. Okay, good. Dan, 
Als je meer op gaan. If you go up, 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 up the pH scale. Skies daar is die pH 7. If you go up the pH scale to 14. You go more to the alkaline to the base side. Oké, okay, so dit is een basis. Dus wat je op gaan. As you go up, you can see the basis concentration, the basis the concentration, word alu meer, becomes bigger, and the acids concentration becomes smaller, smaller, smaller. Maar hulle balanceer mekaar uit. The balance between them is perfect. Want as jy hier die twee met mekaar gaan maal, if you multiply those two concentrations with each other, dan kry jy Maal 10 toe die mag minus 9. Maal 10 toe die mag minus 5 geef vir jou. Minus 14. You get 1 times 10 to the power minus 14. As ons bykie opgaan. Ammoniak. Ammonia. That there is the same as times 10 to the power minus 2. So jy het minus 12. Minus 2 as jy het met mekaar maal kry jy. 1 maal 10 toe die mag minus 14. As jy sal het met water, 7 en 7 krij jy 1 mal 10 toe die mag minus 14. Ok, if we go to the acidic side, as ons na die sier toe gaan, kom ons kyk na tomato sap, tomato juice, you can see that the acids concentration is a lot bigger than the basis concentration, maar as jy hulle met mekaar gaan maal, gaan jy kry 1 mal 10 toe die mag minus 14, and the same when you go down, 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 down. Kijk op ekie jou maag sier, jou stomach acid, a second from the bottom. Dit is nogal skwaai sier, jou maag sier. Daarom, as jy opgooi, if you vomit a lot, you can feel your throat and your, your mouth burns after a while. It starts to eat away the flesh from the acid in your stomach. Ok, goed. So, dit is ook om jy nie baie wil opgooi nie, want dit is baie slecht vir jyself. But it is important that your stomach has that acid in it because it eats away the food and it disintegrates the food and blah, 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 blah. Goed. Um, kan jy sien dat sierlimoen nogal sier is? Can you see that lemon juice is quite um, acidic? Ok, so daarom kan jy met sierlimoen, hy is a sterk elektrolyte, it's a strong electrolyte and that is why you can conduct electricity with a lemon. Ok, you know you can conduct electricity? You can test it at home if you want to. Anyway, goed. So, baie, 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 baie belangrik. At the bottom here. Yeah. Hier op die einde. As jy enige um, uh, hydroxid concentratie met die selle stof se waterstof concentratie maal. So for the same substance, if you multiply the hydroxide concentration with the hyd hydrogen concentration, then you must get 1 times 10 to the power of minus 14. And that there is on your data sheet. The ionization constant for water, and we're going to use it quite a bit. Okay, how come we use it? Cinema, XFO, we are um, investigating human urine or whatever. And we want to see what is the pH of your urine. Okay, want as your pH van your pipi af is, dan is jy bieke siek. Okay, so ons wil nou jou pH kry, van jou pipi, but we only have the basis concentration. Ons het net die basis de concentratie. Maar om pH uit te werk, and we'll get to that, to calculate pH, we need the acids concentration. Okay, so we need to go from the basis concentration to the acids concentration. Hoe kan ons dit doen? Ons kan dit doen met die behulp van hierdie formule. Want ons het hierdie as een constante. If we have the basis concentration, we can calculate the acids concentration. Ok, right, so that is how we're going to use it. Op die volgende blad sê. Ok, daar is een paar indikatore, indicators that you must know the names of. You must also know when do we use these indicators. Ok, goed. Nou daar is nog indikatore, maar ons kyk net na hierdie vier. We only look at these four, this is the one that they ask most often. Ok, ons het methyl oranje, methyl orange. Ons het broemtimol blauw, broemtimol blue. You can also use the abbreviation BTB, broemtimol blue. Then we have litmus paper, lakmus papier. Um, jy krij rooies van hulle en blauwe van hulle. 
en je krijgt Vernolf Tallinn. Vernolf Tallinn. Dit is hoe je dit uitspreekt daaronder. Vernolf Tallinn. Ja, dat is daar een beetje een beetje een beetje een beetje een beetje een beetje een so, as jy, sê nou maar, metiel oranje heet, gaan hy gaan van oranje na geel, broem toe moet blauw, schil na blauw, bla 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 bla. Jy kan nie net enige indikator, enige tyd gebruik nie. There is a specific time when you can use each indicator. Because in certain scenarios, some indicators will not work, because they only work in a certain range. This is jou oor. Your ear only works in a certain frequency range. Okay, so if we, I want you to figure out where we will have, I don't know, microsonic, ultrasonic, with the waves irritating the dog's ears, dan kan ons nie jou oor gebruik nie. Nee, want jou oor tel het nie op nie. Goed, so same thing here, certain indicators we use in certain scenarios, because that is when they work. Met die oranje gebruik ons wanneer ons een low pH het. Ok, we use it when we have a low pH. So when we have an acidic solution. Wanneer ons een sure rache oplossing het. Meer na die sure kant. Ok, so dit is wanneer jy een sterk sier meng met een swak basis. So when you mix a strong acid with a weak base, the end product will be more to the acidic side. Strong acid with a weak base. Okay. Can you make me a voorbeeld give van a sterk seer? Strong acid. HCL. Zout seer. Can you make me a voorbeeld give van a swak basis? A weak base. Nee. Nee, daar is een sier. Ammoniak. En H3. Dat is een weak base. Ok. Goed. Volgende. Broemt u maar blauw. You can see the end pH. Die pH is nogal in die middel. So dit is wanneer ons een neutrale. When we have a neutral solution. Where the end pH is more to the neutral side. Wanneer die toegeet by mekaar sit, en het kan sy leer mekaar uit. They cancel each other out, they neutralize each other. So, the example that we can have there, is a strong acid, with a strong base. Can I get an example of a strong acid? Okay, what's the L? Hydrochloric acid, yes. And a strong base, Ja. Nee. Hydroxid. Sodium hydroxide. Okay, so when they cancel each other out, when they have more or less the same strength. Yes, PK? Okay. okay. So, with that, just hold that thought here. If you look at litmus paper, Lakmus papier. You can see the pH range is also more or less in the middle. It has a bigger range than Broomtimo Blue, but it's also more in the middle. Okay? So that is also when you have a neutral solution. Okay? So both of them will work for the same thing. Let's go all the way salad the back. Broomtimo Blue is bigger more. Broomtimo Blue is a bit more precise. Bigger more precise. Because it will change color with a drop. Eén druppel gaan die kleer verander. When litmus paper is paper that you just put in en hy verander het in kleer. Dat is nie a range waarna hy verander. So lakmus papier is wat jy gebruik for a quick test, but it's not a very accurate test. It doesn't tell you where on the pH scale you are. En broemtumel blauw is bieke meer akker op. So jyvrou, alles het lakmus papier gebruik. Vir jylle vir a prakties. Sy het, want sy het nou dag my kom vraag vir lakmoes papier. Ok, so, litmoes papier is not that accurate, so it has a wider range. But they both work for the same thing. Ok, so a neutral solution at the end. 
So jy kan vir lakmoespapier, litmoespapier, you can also have a strong acid and a strong base. Or you can have a weak acid with a weak base. A swak seer with a swak basis. Can I get an example of a weak acid? Yeah. Fosforseer, ja, waterstofosfaat. And a weak base? Oh, ja, of kom misschien iets anders bykie, calcium carbonaat, marmer, ja. Yes, yes, so dit is ook om hulle akreliekie saam. Jy vroeg, is marmer en a natrium? Calcium carbonaat, sê A, sê O3. Marmer. Marmer, of kalksteen. Koeksoda. Goed, and then the last one is phenolphthalein. Phenolphthalein is when you are more to the basic side. So you can see now to buy a word PR. It's a very high pH. So it's more to the basic side. Okay, so when you have here a weak acid. I'm going to apply on this picky. Wanneer jy a swak seer het. In a sterk basis. We have a weak acid and a strong base. Now, we should do a practical on this. Okay, so ek hoopelik gaan ons a prakties doen nie oor. Vir punte. Hoopelik. So die een wat ons hier so gaan doen vir punte is we are going to compare a vinegar, acidic acid, with sodium hydroxide, natrium hydroxide. Okay, so that is an example of where we will use phenolphthalein, and phenolphthalein goes to peak. So, bye, bye, my pink amber, so is chabu se beke. Okay, right, so, hoe gaan ons nou die pH bereken? There you have the formula for the pH, not the definition, calculating pH, die formule is op jou data vels, on jou data sheet, weet jylle waarvoor staan pH? Nee, pH staan vir power of hydrogen, obviously Afrikaans, die selle, power of hydrogen, so die mag van die waterstof concentratie, So jy kan sien hier, 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 daar is concentratie van die waterstof, van die hydroonium en waterstof, het ek moest jy gesê, die selle ding. So the power of the hydrogen, and when they say power of, they actually mean 10 to the power of, 10 tot die mag. Ok, nou wil ek ook hier met my jou sakrek en alreik al sien. Ok, With your calculator, as you can soek for log, okay, dan sien jy daar is jou logie, het jy al met log gewerk in wiskunde? Prachtig, wat is die inwerse van log? Wat is die inwerse van log? Dit is 10 door die mag iets. Nee, dit is. Dit is nie. Ja, jy het... Ok, kom maar, kijk, ga nie daarna na jou log. Nee? Jy het weet jy het een shift knoppie. Right. As jy sin, kos en tang. Shift. Then you do the inverse. Nee? As jy daar kijk, as jy die ander kleer, is sin door die mag minus 1. Kos door die mag minus 1, blablabla. So jou shift, is die inverse. As jy kyk na log, shift log will give you 10 to the power of. So log is actually to the power of. 10 to the power of. Ok, so dit is gewoon pH, power of hydrogen, waterstof tot die mag, 10 tot die mag wat ook al. Ok, so dit is wat dit beteken. Goed, recht, so jy leed jou log knopje daar voor jou, ons gaan hom nou baie gebruik. 
Um, net iets wat jy moet weet, Pia het geen eenheid nie, has no unit. The range is from 0 until 14. And please just know that the concentration of the hydronium ion and the hydrogen ion is the same thing. This is solid. So you can enige een van die twee skryf. You can write any one of the two. Okay, goed. Die eerste vraag daar is, bereken die PL van die oplossing, waar die concentratie van die hydronium dit is, en bepaal wat er indicator sal gebruik word. So, this is a very introductionary question, and let's say we did a whole thing, blah, 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 and we got the concentration of the hydronium ion to be that, gaan bereken die PA, en wat er indicator moes ons gebruik het. Which indicator should we have used? Ok. Goed, so, PA formule is minus log die concentratie van die hydronium ion, then you fill in your value, so minus, sorry, minus 10, and if you fill in your concentration, ach nie minus 10, minus log, if you fill in the concentration, you lose the square brackets, as jy concentratie invul, verloor jy die hoek aan gehakies, so is net 10 tot die mag minus 7, and if you type that in, and I want everyone to practice doing that, what did you get? Ok, want log is 10 to die mag, en jy het minus 10 to die mag, goed, so 7. CA is 7, a PH van 7, beteken jy moes water indicator gebruik, which indicator should you have used? Check the list at the top. Broemtimol blau, BTB, or you could have used litmus paper as well. Guys, so you get three. Guys, so what is the indicator? Is the next one on? Methyl orange. So this is when it's optimal work. But you can still see. Good. Now, Frau Lefjou. Bereken die PA as die oplossing daai is en bepaal wat die indikator jy moet gebruik. Weer eens. Denk jy dat gaan so makkelijk bly? Die PA wat jy kry is 11 11 and which indicator should you use? Phenolftalin. Oei, Afrikaans, ek weet of ek het rechts wel nie. Het is al al ergens in. Vernolf. Ok. Volg in die ene raak, een bykie meer interessant. The next one gets a bit more interesting. Dit sê daar, bereken die PA van een soveel concentratie soutsier oplossing en bepaal die indikator wat gebruik moet word. Ok. So this time, they didn't give you the concentration of the hydronium aan. Hulle gee net vir die concentratie van die sout sier. So we must first know, is it a strong acid or a base? Will it ionize completely or incompletely? How will it ionize? The ionization reaction. Is the ratio 1 to 1, 1 to 2, bla 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 bla. En dan kan ons hier lesse met die. Ok. So ons gaan begin met sout sier hier. Is hy een sterk sier of een swak sier? Sterk. So dit beteken ionize completely. Almost completely. Ok. Now, almost completely in real life, but we are going to consume, uh, assume that it's completely, helemaal. Ok, goed. So, hy uh, gaan ioniseer, beteken hy reageer met water, omdat hy sterk seer is, gaan hy helemaal ioniseer, en jy krijg die hydronium ioon, en die kloor ioon. 
Ja, ja. dat sê, neem aan dat jy in die seer volledig, of hulle sal dan vir jou sê, hoeveel oor blij nie einde wat ook al. Goed, now because this ratio is one to one, it means if this concentration is 0.01, then this concentration must be 0.01. Okay, goed. So now we eat ons the concentration of the hydronium in, and now we can calculate the pH. pH is negative log concentration of the hydronium ion. Okay, two. So you, does it make sense? Mark it if you said a pH of two. Is it a low pH or a low pH? Low. Is dit nou by in die seer of die basis? Seer. Dit is nogal een sterk seer. Is zout seer een sterk seer? Ja. So dit maak vir jou sin. Hier die goeders moet vir jou sin maak. It must make sense to you. Ok? Right, and which indicator would we, should we have used? Methyl oranje. Methyl orange. Ok. The next one. Calculate the pH. Um, um, Sam, I can make your coffee for work. Say your name. Okay. Calculate the pH of a solution of so much sodium hydroxide. Okay. Good. So here yeah, is the basis. And I'll give you that one concentration. And then you will go out of Ok, en dan sê wat er indikator jy wil gebruik. Om PA uit te werk, hoort ons die concentratie van die hydroonium eeuwen. But this is a base, it will give us a hydroxide. So how can we go from a hydroxide to a hydronium? Nee, nie omge... What did we just do two pages ago? Yes, the ionization constant of water. Jy gaan hier die gebruik, you're going to use this to go from the hydroxide concentration to the hydronium concentration. En dan kan jy PA gaan uitwerk. Ok, so hier so gaan drie stappe in hier. So there will be three steps in hier, and this can count up until six marks. Ok, so what we are going to do is we're going to say sodium hydroxide, it's a base, is a basis, so hy gaan dissociëer in water, it's going to dissociate in water, and because it's a strong base, it will dissociate almost completely. So jy krijg die natrium hier oon, en jy krijg die hydroxid hier oon. You can see there, the ratio is 1 to 1. Ja? Ja? So, hy, Omdat hier die eens concentratie 0,01 is, because that concentration is 0.01, and because it's a strong base, and it dissociates completely, this concentration will be 0.01. Ok? Maar ons soek nie die concentratie van die hydroxide oor, en ons soek die concentratie van die waterstof oor, of die hydroonie oor. So we must go from there to there, and how do we do that? With the help of the ionization constant of water, die ionisatie constante van water. So that is where, if you multiply the two concentrations together, as you die twee concentraties in elkaar maal, krij jy 1 mal 10 toe die mag minus 14. Ons weet, hierdie ene concentratie is 0,01. Remember, if you substitute the concentration, we lose the square brackets. Skor daar ene concentratie, so my reko moet nie uitskreen nie, wat gaat allemaal dit doen? Wat krij jy, Arthur? Gaan jy deel of maal of plus of minus? Deel. Jy gaan deel. Ok, deel om.
Ian Maltin to the minus 12. Right. Then you write down your pH formula. But ma'am, why did you change your pH formula now? Remember, that is the same as that. So you can write any one of the two. I can turn it because I used that there. I'm going to use the same thing there. Okay. Maar as jy hom gebruik, is dit ook fijn. Ja. Jy kan ons nog nie finale antwoord nie, so jy hoef nog nie. Right, so we have the negative log of 1 times 10 to the power minus 12. Kan jy die sonne rusak reken haar doen? 12 pH. Does it make sense, a 12 pH? 12 pH is baie hoog, dis meer aan die basis. Kan ons moet doen, the alkali side. Is sodium hydroxide an uh, alkali? Yes. Is it a strong base? Yes. So a pH of 12 does make sense. Which indicator would we should we must we use? Phenolphthalein. I think it's in English. Yeah, then yeah. Okay, as if that is not difficult enough. Let's make it more difficult. I'm easing you in. Is it not like any? Okay, okay. And let's say you have 9,8 gram swal seed, but it is in 500 milliliter water. What is the pH of the oplossing? Okay, so now we will see if we begin an info tabel on the right side. Okay, you start with the info table. You have the mass there is 9.8 grams. They tell you the volume is 500 milliliters. We do not like milliliters. So, liters. So, you can say, mal tintermag, negative 3. They say we work with sulfuric acid. Now, that is quite important for me for two reasons. Number one. I know it is a strong acid, so it means it, it ionizes completely. It ionizes for later. And number two, they give that to me so that I get the molar mass, molar mass. Okay, done. My plan, my planning. I want to get the pH. That is the frog. That is the formula for the pH. That is the formula for the pH. Okay? But, hulle gee net my die inlichting oor swalseer. They give me the information regarding that. And I want the concentration of hydronium. How can I go from that to that? Nee. Jy, wat noem jy dit? Ionisatie reaksie. If you write the ionization reaction. If you write how sulfuric acid reacts with water. And acid dissolving in water. Then you must get the hydronium ion somewhere. So, as ek sy concentratie kan kry. If I can get that one's concentration. And I can write the balanced equation. Then I can get this one's concentration. And then I can get that concentration. Okay, good. So that's weer eens drie stappen. Okay, so I'm going to start. I'm going to first get the concentration. I'm first going to get that one's concentration. I'm going to see how many places I have. I think I have another line by the side. Okay, good. So I'm going to start just with sulfuric acid, swall seed. And I want to get the concentration. Now the formula for concentration is mass over molar mass times volume. There's actually two formulas. There's another one. Concentration is mole over volume. But I have the mass and the molar mass. So I'm going to use The mass is 9.8. Molar mass is 98. And the volume is 0 0.5. And just to save space, I'm going to write it on or next to it. I can write the concentration on the VS 0,2. Nee? Good. 
Then I'm going to write the ionization reaction to get the ratio. How many of this will give me how many of the hydronium ions? Okay, so the ionization reaction gets water, reacts with water, and for my to give the hydronium ion, the hydronium ion. How do I know that will form? Because a sir can always give you the hydronium ion. Of, of jy kon gesê het, hy gaan hier opsplit, daar. Ok, en daar gaan met hom reageer, en jy krij die sulfaat ion. Is dit gebalanceerd? Is dit balanced? No, because there is two hydrogens hier. Daar is twee waterstoffe daar. Ok, vir die rede, gaan twee van hulle met water reageer, om twee hydroniums te gee. Ok, so die twee geef jy twee hydroniums, it gives you two hydroniums, and for that you need two waters. Ok, now we did this last year, en ek weet jylle kan dit glad nie onder. Ok, ons het hierdie specifieke reaksie last jaar gedoen, iets wat twee waterstoffe kan weggeen. Something that can give away two hydrogens. We call a diprotic acid. A diprotische sier. Leid dit een klokkie? Ja, nou weet ek, as ek gevraagd het, meneer het met julle groen en julle sê nie, he? Nee, julle jok. Nee. A die, wat beteken die? Twee. So, you can see it can give away two protons. A hydrogen is considered a proton. Or so, a ander naam vorm is a proton. Ok, so a diprotic acid, hy kan twee protone weggeen, twee waterstoffe weggeen. A diprotische sier. Ok, so as jy a twee daar sien, then you know it will need two waters to produce two hydroniums. Always. If it's a triprotic acid, a triprotic acid, so it's phosphor acid, right? It can give away three hydrogens, so it will need three waters to produce three hydronium ions. Okay, so die water so vi daar, sê vir jou, hoeveel hydronium sê gaan kry. Okay, so we can see from there, that one of them will give me two of them. The ratio is one to two. Okay, we saw that the concentration is 0.2 and the ratio is 1 to 2. So, hoeveel gaan jy krijg van hom? Dis 0,4. Okay, and now we can calculate the pH. Uiteindelik, dit was die vraag. pH is negative log concentration of the hydronium ion. Negative log of 0.4. En ek denk nie, jylle gaan dit uit jylle kop uit gaan doen nie. En as jy op afrond? Is nie altyd so nie. Ok, does this make sense? Maak dit sin, dit is a baie laal PA. A very low pH, very close to the acidic side. So we must be working with a strong acid. Are we working with a strong acid? Yes, we are. Okay, good. Um, ons gaan nog net vraag 7 en vraag 8 doen en dan gaan ons klaar wees. Okay, dan is ons nog ver van klaar met die hoofdstuk. Maar ons sal nog een extra klas inwerk in die nieuwe kwartaal. <laughs> Okay, good. And let's start off here. Calculate the pH of that concentration of so, uh, sodium hydroxide solution and determine the indicator. Okay, so here ends my plan. My planning. Yeah, but if you want to get rid of it, you will get so, as jy wil om eindelijk, jy kan nog gaan toets, maar jy wil om eindelijk gaan toets nie. Jy wil eindelijk toets as jy twee goeders van mekaar voeg. Ok, 
So they say we're busy with the sodium hydroxide. That's important for two reasons. Number one, you know this is a strong base, which means it dissociates completely. You also know you need that for the molar mass. And so molar mass is 40. Okay. Then gele for you say concentration. They give you that concentration is 0.25. En dan vir al of jou bereken die pH. Calculate the pH. Now, to calculate the pH, that is the formula. Daar is die formule. Maar ek werk met de basis. So how am I going to go from the basis concentration to the hydronium concentration? Wat noem ons daar ander ding? Jy moet ook met die naam begin sê. Water is ionisatie constante. What is ionization constant? Where will you find it in an exam? Thank you very much. Goed. So, ek gaan eens myself sê, reg, voordat ek daar kan gaan doen, before I can do that, I must just use that ionization constant. So that I need to do first. And before I can do that, I must show that I must, that concentration I have. I must show that I have. Goed. So, ek moet die dissociatie reaksie gaan schrijf. I need to show the dissociation reaction. To show that if I have this one's concentration, I can get that one's concentration. With that, I can substitute in there to get that concentration. And with that, I can substitute it in there to get the pH. Can you see where the three topic is? Okay, so we're going to start with our three steps. We're going to start at the bottom. So we have sodium hydroxide will split up because it's a strong base, omdat hy sterk basis is. Kies toch? Gaan nou omtrent volledig dissociate. It will dissociate completely to give you a sodium ion and an hydroxide ion. You can see from there the ratio is 1 to 1. One. So as say concentration 0.25 is, then this one's concentration is 0.25. So now with say concentration, now I can use the ionization constant of water, the ionization constant of water, to calculate the concentration of the hydrogen on the concentration van die waterstof die oon te gaan bepaal. En jylle is bezig met dit. Moe nie uitskree nie. Min 14, ja. So it's 4 times 10 to the power minus 14. En as jy daai log moet gaan uitwerk aan my, wat krij jy? Ah, 13,4. 13,4. All right. Maak die antwoord sin, Lianke. Hoekom? Yes, it's a strong base, so it's a high pH. If you would have used an indicator, it would be phenolphthalein. That's the most suitable. Yeah. Yeah, but as we have a strong base, then we can't say that the salt would be like more. But I'll have you say, here's the thing. 
neem aan hy uh, ioniseer volledig, hulle gaan dit vir jou sê, of hulle sal vir jou sê, dit is hoeveel jou oorspronkelijk gehad het, en dit is hoeveel oorgeblij het aan die einde, of hulle gaan vir jou die ionisatie constant te gee, en dan jy gaan uitwerk. Oké, okay. the last one, I want you to try on your own, and I'm going to give you five minutes. Gelaat nie, ek wil die hele breine moet gebruik word, want betuig van julle is net... Uh, Okay, so I'm asking it in the reverse. Come, 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 come. 